Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Harry Potter games for the PS3. The two Wonderbook games are augmented reality games. They are exclusive to PS3 and actually they are so exclusive that just having a PS3 and the discs for the games isn't enough to play the games. In order to play the games you need a PlayStation Move equipment, the PlayStation Eye and the Move controller and not only that but you also need the book, which is specially made for these two games. And without the book, you can't play the games. But luckily, if you lost your book, or if you found the games somewhere and bought them, but they didn't came with a book, luckily, you can print the book. And I will try to scan my book and leave a link in the description of the files in case you lost your book. But beware that the experience is worse with a DIY made book. I mean, the best way to experience the game is with an original book, because the book feels sturdy and is very solid and nice feeling, but with printed papers the experience just isn't the same. But in case you've lost your book and can't find another one, at least you can replay your game with printed copies of the book. So I'll try to leave a link in the description with a scanned book so that you can print yourself a book and make a DIY one. But beware that the experience might be worse. Okay, so what are the games? As I said, they are augmented reality games, which means that what the camera sees can be influenced by body movement. For example, you can brush the dust of the book or use the PlayStation Move remote which becomes a wand to move the text around and cast spells. The games are actually pretty neat, especially if you are a Harry Potter fan. The two stories are well written in my opinion and they touched J.K. Rowling's art of telling a story. The augmented reality isn't perfect though, you can see throughout the whole gameplay moments where if you look close at the screen you can see the imperfections but considering the circumstances the games are really nicely made and the imperfections are never bothersome unless you want to nitpick. In the first game, the book of spells, the game consists of you learning a huge lot of spells and in the second one, book of potions, you learn a lot of potions. And I like the style of getting through each element. First the narrator tells you what you are going to learn. Then you do some interlude stuff that differs from game to game and from spell slash potion. Then comes a part where you test the spell slash potion. After that comes a story time, which as a Harry Potter fan is the best part of the games in my opinion. And then you are put to a test. The way the games play is by flipping the pages of the book, tilting them, dusting them off, flicking your wand over it. Optional, you can even shout spells to your camera that has an inbuilt microphone. The games aren't that long, they take you around 4 hours each. Normally, I will see that they are short, but considering that they are children games, I mean, even if they are incredible games for any Harry Potter fan, the target audience are still the kids. And also, considering that they are augmented reality games, 4 hours of gameplay is fantastic. And those 4 hours are filled with varied stuff to do. Ok, the second one, Book of Potions, might feel more repetitive, especially since the heating minigame gets to be repeated too much. But overall, the experience is varied. It follows the set formula, but each spell brings something you haven't seen before. Also, I streamed the gameplay of the two games and it seems that the games look really boring. Many people commented me that. So there are two alternatives. One, either the game is fun only if you play it yourself but looks boring if you look at someone else play it or two, the games are boring for a non Harry Potter fan but since I'm a big HP fan, I like the games. Also. In the first one, I didn't like that you had to carefully pay attention to the narrator for the tiniest thing. And one wrong button press made him shut up and not give me 
any further indications. That's how I landed not knowing what to do anymore in the game. I pressed a button by accident. Then I progressed to the end of the chapter, the narrator told me to flip the book and start chapter 2, but the menu told me that it's locked. I still had things to do in chapter 1, so I restarted the game on a new game and noticed that before I haven't done some stuff because I pressed the button by mistake and I didn't know what I had to do since the narrator was shutting up. And remember that this is a children's game. The narrator in the first game has this bug, which is very annoying if it happens to you, and it can happen. I mean, what are the chances of a child mispressing a button or pressing a button by accident on the PlayStation Move controller? Also, there are no updates for the game, which means that since the release, they never fixed the bugs. I checked in 2020 if there are any updates, and there were none. And also, between the two games, you can see the progress. The second one has better graphics, and the narrator repeats everything, so that the mishaps from the first game don't happen again. The controller layout also feels better in the second game, so yeah, the first one is more varied, but suffers from some bugs. The second one is more polished, and with bugs fixed but is slightly more repetitive. Anyway, if you ever get the equipment for the two games, I recommend you play them. I enjoyed them and recommend them to you and to your kids. Even if from the video you might get the impression that they are boring games, I recommend you to play them, if you get the equipment. I enjoy them. So yeah, my opinion is that they are good games. Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix is fantastic. The biggest selling point of the game is the free room. You get a one-to-one -one virtual representation of Hogwarts. Some doors are locked, it's true, you can travel literally everywhere, but the castle is huge and walking through it makes you realize why Harry and Ron were late in the transfiguration class in the first year. The castle is confusing, but don't worry, you have somewhat of a GPS. If you select the destination on the map, Moroder footsteps will appear on the floor, guiding you to your way to your destination. Ok, now, what do you do in the game? Well, mostly you'll be doing tasks for students. The tasks put the free room to good use, but if you're expecting something exciting, you're wrong. Most tasks are laid back. You have to retrieve stuff, or get stuff, or talk to gargoyles, which is the most annoying task. You are asked to talk to five talking gargoyles. They aren't shown on the map, you have to explore the whole castle in order to talk to them. And this is a problem many people had with the game. It doesn't tell you what exactly you have to do. To pass the game, you'll need to either watch a lot of YouTube walkthroughs or explore the castle till you can't no more. Some people love exploring a lot and figuring stuff for themselves but others prefer to be told what they have to do. Also, we get a lot of extra stuff to do. Tasks aren't the only thing you, you'll be doing in the game. You also get duels, you get exploding snap, and you can play chess. And there are collectibles on the map. There's a lot of stuff to do in Hogwarts. You also get story parts from the movie. Overall, the game is marvelous. If you are excited by the idea to visit an accurate virtual Hogwarts, then I totally recommend the game. Me, as a Harry Potter fan, I can't tell you if you're going to like it or not, because I like any Harry Potter game, but many non-HP fans have played it and liked it. So my recommendation is to play the game only if you like the idea to free roam around in an accurate representation of Hogwarts. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince follows the same formula as the previous one, but one issue is fixed, the confusing tasks. This time you don't need YouTube walkthroughs and guides anymore to finish the game. What you have to do is more straightforward, and that's a big improvement over the other one. Also you get more parts of Hogwarts, for example the previous one didn't have the passage to the Quidditch field behind the Aulery. 
Also in this game you don't play chess or exploding snap anymore, which were fun. They were cut out and instead have been replaced with three minigames that get repeated a lot to spice things up. You duel with all four houses of Hogwarts, you brew potions from a generous list, or you play Quidditch. In duels you can choose from a multitude of spells and blast your way in duels. Some players may not like the duels because they are too easy. They aren't challenging, but sure are fun to play. And the other two are challenging. If you want to have a high rating that is. If you want to get 5 stars in potions or in quidditch, you're going to feel the challenge. But if you're a casual player, don't worry. You can get a low rating and just breeze through everything. Overall, I recommended the game. Even if you're not a Harry Potter fan, I still recommend the game. The game is straightforward, I think you'll enjoy it even if you don't know the context. You get a GPS, which this time is Nick the Ghost, to show you around so that you don't get lost in the castle. The game is great, I recommend it to you. LEGO Harry Potter Years 1 to 4 and LEGO Harry Potter Years 5 to 7 are amazing. They are the typical LEGO formula translated into the Harry Potter story. And it works, or it worked for me at least. You get the entire saga summarized in a funny way and you get to cast spells around Hogwarts. You can explore a LEGO version of Hogwarts. The games are marvelous. I like them and I totally recommend you play them. And I've put this one as only half of a game because LEGO Dimensions Fantastic Beasts isn't a Harry Potter standalone game. It's a DLC in LEGO Dimensions. If you want to play the DLC, you need to buy the story pack. And you also have to buy a toy pad controller to play the game. And when you boot it up, you see that the LEGO formula was translated into the Fantastic Beasts story, but this time you can play with other characters too that don't belong to the wizarding world. And that ruins the fun. I mean solving puzzles with Aquaman, Finn the Human or Jake the Dog or seeing Sonic in Fantastic Beasts make it feel less like a wizarding game and more like a modded version of Skyrim. The game is, the game is really fun. LEGO Dimensions is a really great game, but as a Harry Potter experience, well, it feels butchered. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 is a mediocre game. Many people call it a horrible game, and truth is that even I, a big Harry Potter fan, admit that this game is bad. It's the first time in a long streak of amazing games that the Harry Potter game got to a time level. The game is bad, it feels like they just slapped some gameplay elements and didn't test the game beforehand. It's not broken, but I can't imagine a game tester playing this and saying that it's good. The game has clunky controls, casting spells isn't satisfying, the cover button doesn't always respond and it's a chore to switch spells. You have a button to switch spells and if you want to cast a specific spell, you have to repeatedly press the spell button mid-battle until the selected spell appears, uh, until the spell you want to cast appears. And to summarize the gameplay, you get two types of things to do. You get shooting levels and sneaking levels. And while the shooting levels are just dull, the sneaking levels are terrible. When you get to the first sneaking level in London, you already know that this is going to be annoying. You have to use Harry's cloak to sneak. Your cloak drains when you move near people, or if you bump into people. So you have to stand still, so that your cloak recharges. And I don't know who thought that it would be fun to stand in the middle of the road for, to wait for some bar to recharge, but for me, a player on the internet who makes reviews, it wasn't fun. Also the level designs are confusing. You get a GPS spell that shows you the way, but it doesn't always show you the way well. Also the storytelling is terrible too. 
you are jumping into missions without getting any context. Why am I in a cave with a dragon? How did Harry get here? Where's Ron and Hermione? And this goes on throughout the whole game. Sure, you can watch the movie or read the book to find out about the story. But since you don't understand the story that well by just playing the game, it means that the storytelling is bad. Also, there are portions where you can't run in the game. You can just walk. You also get some bad camera angles. Also, there isn't an option to turn on the subtitles. And there are more complaints, but I'm not getting into more of them. Overall, the game is repetitive with its two gameplay types, boring battles and annoying cloak levels. I enjoyed the game as bad as it was because I'm a big Harry Potter fan, but I admit that it's objectively a bad game and I don't recommend anyone to play it. But at least Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 is better. The first one is terrible, but this one is brief and to the point. The first one took you around 5 hours to finish. This one takes you around 3 to 4. I know, it's a crime to pay full price for a game and play only 3 hours. I've told you that the game was terrible. Well, from the two bad games, the second one is better. It doesn't have the annoying cloak levels and the combat has been tweaked. You still shoot your way through enemies, but in my opinion the combat in the second one feels better. And shooting your way like this is everything you do in the game. For 4 hours. I know, it sounds repetitive, and it is, but believe me, after playing the first one, that in theory was more varied, I realized that a repetitive game, but with a solid gameplay, is way better than a varied game with bad gameplay. I know, it's obvious, but I wanted to express that idea. Ok, so all you do is shoot. And the shooting is ok. The game still is mediocre, but better than Deathly Hallows Part 1. I don't recommend you play this game either, unless you're a hardcore HP fan that will devour any form of Harry Potter media. I recommend you to stick only to the Harry Potter games that have free room. Those are great. This ones where you only shoot are bad, and not because you don't get free room anymore, but because they are poorly executed. You have to understand the A. The source material wasn't generous. It's hard to make a tie-in game for that part of the Harry Potter saga. But even if they have an excuse for not having free roam, they have no excuse for a game with clunky controls, bad level designs, poor optimization and other small annoyances that all add up for a bad or at least mediocre experience. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly tunnels of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.